we're going to take a look at how to look at your data in SeatMonk in a more quantitative way. Previously when we've looked at data in here we've just used the normal uh, data visualization tools to look at the raw data in the context of an annotated genome. But there are limitations to what you can do with this. You have to look at each uh, region individually. You can't systematically go through all of your data and also because of the limitations of what you can display on screen what you're seeing is not an always completely quantitative view of your data. So to get around this we have some quantitation tools within SeekMonk that we're going to go through now. Quantitation in SeekMonk happens in two stages. Uh, in the first stage we can go into data and define probes and that allows us to specify a set of regions within the genome over which we're going to make measurements so these are termed probes within the program there are a number of different ways that you can choose to make probes in here uh, you can select the different probe generated that you want on the left and the options for it come up on the right so the simplest one is a running window generator where you just pick fixed size windows uh, with a specific interval between them and they're put uh, completely across your genome you can design probes around features, which is what we're going to come back to do in a second. You can also do contig probe generation, which allows you to select one or more data sets uh, and then uses the data within those to do peak detection. So it looks for regions of enrichment and builds probes over those. Uh, there are a couple of more specialised ones. Existing probe list generator is used when you've made a filtered list and you want to turn that into a complete probe set. Uh, interstitial probe generator also operates when you have a set of probes already and it just puts a new set in between all the set that you had previously. And then finally, load probes from file is the sort of default option that if you can't make the probes you want any other way, you can load in a set of positions to use as probe regions. So if you had an external peak caller, for instance, you could just load the probes from the output of that file straight into SeekMonk. In our case, I'm going to make probes over promoters. So I'm going to design around mRNA features. I'm going to remove duplicates in case I have two promoters in the same position. Uh, you can make up to three probes for every uh, instance of each feature. In this case I'm only going to make an upstream probe because I want the promoter region. I'm going to make it from 2,000 base pairs upstream of the transcription start site to 1,000 base pairs downstream. And I'm going to untick the little box that says remove probes with no data because I want to have something for every promoter in my genome. Okay, my probes are now created, so having decided where I'm going to make my measurements, I now need to actually use my data to provide a measurement for every promoter in my genome for every data set that I have. Again, there are a number of different ways you can do this, and the options are listed down the left-hand side of the quantitation options. The simplest one is a read count quantitation. There are various options within this, but the basic idea is it just counts how many reads overlap with each probe. Uh, base pair quantitation is similar, except that instead of just counting uh, an a read as overlapping or not, it actually counts the number of bases of that read that overlap. So it's more quantitative, especially for short probe regions. Enrichment quantitation is designed to be the sort of simplest quantitation method, so it just measures how, much, how many more reads you've got overlapping with a particular region than you would have expected just by randomly distributing them. So it's a very simple quantitation option with no options, uh, but it's a good starting place if you don't know what else to do. Difference quantitation allows you to use the strands of your reads as part of your quantitation, so you can look for the differences between forward or reverse reads, and there are various options to do that. Percentage coverage quantitation just says what percentage of each probe is covered to any depth at all uh, by a read. Coverage depth quantitation looks for the maximum or minimum degree of overlap between reads uh, within a probe. And then the last few are slightly specialised again. Relative quantitation allows you to correct uh, an existing quantitative data set using one data set as a reference so it's uh, useful for sort of input versus enriched type experiments where you can correct the enriched uh, sample by the input. Manual correction just allows you to bring in external correction factors that you've calculated outside the program and apply them to your data and rank quantitation just instead of quantitating uh, on a sliding scale just orders your data and converts the quantitations to ranks. The one we're going to look at to start with is the read count quantitation, because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of changes in here. So rather than just counting reads, I'm going to log transform the count, so I don't get too wide a dynamic range on here. I'm going to not count duplicated reads, so if 
the same read turns up more than once, I only count it once. I'm also going to correct for read total recount, which means that if I have data sets with different numbers of total reads, then that will be accounted for so I don't get a bias just from having had more data in one data set than the other. And now I'm going to quantitate. It takes a few seconds to quantitate, but depending on your number of probes it should be fairly quick. And when your quantitation is complete, your data track displays will now split in two and you'll see the raw data above and the quantitative data below. You can choose to display just the quantitative data or just the raw data and those options are up on the toolbar here where you can see just the raw data, just the quantitative data or both. Now that I've quantitated my data I can actually look at some views of this quantitation to see what's going on in my samples. Probably the most useful initial view is to look at the distribution of quantitative values within one data set. This applies to data sets, data groups or replicate sets. So to do this, all I need to do is to select the data set I want to view, right mouse click on it and say show probe value histogram and that will plot out a histogram of all the uh, values that are associated with the currently active probe list which is all of probes at the moment. I can drag the little slider at the top to try and sort of improve the smoothing of my data set, uh, my histogram rather, and that's probably something reasonable. So I can see that actually in this case I have a bimodal distribution where I probably have a set of probes that are not, uh, that don't contain this particular modification and a set of promoters that do. I can do that for any individual data set. If I want to compare multiple data sets, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, if I have a lot of data sets, I can go to View, Box Whisker Plot and Visible Data Stores, and that will plot out a box whisker view for all of my currently visible data stores. In this case, I have two data stores open, and I can see that, in general, uh, my distribution for my K4 modification is wider and the mean is higher. For my K27, it's a tighter distribution with a lower uh, mean. Um, so I can see instantly that there are differences between those two sets. These box whisker plots are on the same scale, so you can directly compare between the two. If I only have two data sets uh, that I want to compare, I can do a scatter plot. So if I go to View and Scatter Plot, I can select the two data sets I want to view. Use the little slider on the right to make the boxes bigger and I can immediately see that I have two distinct populations on here. I have a population which show similar levels of enrichment in the two data sets but then in here I have a set that are specifically enriched in K4. So if I want to select those I can just drag in this view and save a probe list from there. And that will then appear in my set of probe lists down here. So uh, the scatter plot can be useful for looking at the comparison of two sets very quickly. It's an easy way to see how consistent they are. You can also view uh, a couple of other things that are useful in here. So one of these is a trend plot. A trend plot takes a slightly different view of your data where it allows you to look across uh, an averaged probe. So if you can imagine saying instead of looking at all my promoters together, I can take a view across an averaged promoter to see if there is a trend in the density of reads as I run from one side of that probe to another. It's easiest just to show it. So if I go to View and Probe Trend Plot, various things I can put on here. Again, I'm going to do some corrections on here, so I'm going to remove duplicate reads. I'm also going to scale within each data store, which means that the scales will be different for my different data sets, so they all use the full amount of space available. And I'm going to create the plot. The probes that I've generated from my features have a direction associated with them, so that I can actually uh, know that the left hand side of this will always be upstream. My transcription start site in this case will be at 2000 because I did 2000 upstream to 1000 downstream so my transcription start site is about here and I can see now the pattern of distribution of reads across uh, an averaged promoter to see what the trend looks like around the transcription start site. If I drag my bar up on the right hand side it will smooth the plot slightly for me so I can see that the trends are similar between K4 and K27, albeit that there is a slight 
change in the point at which the two peak. So K27 is actually enriched slightly further into the gene than K4 would be. Another way of looking at my data is to look at uh, an aligned probes plot. An aligned probes plot, instead of taking an averaged view like the uh, trend plot does, it allows me to look at each individual probe and it aligns them up one above the other and then uses a density plot to see what's going on. So I'm just going to create this. I have more than a thousand probes so it's only going to show me the first thousand but that should be enough to see what's going on. The plot will calculate and I can now see a similar sort of plot to what I had before. So the bottom of this graph shows uh, a distance across each probe so my transcription start site is going to be somewhere around here and now I can now see subpopulations within my set so I have some that are only enriched after the transcription start site some that are enriched completely through before and after the transcription start site and some that are only enriched before the transcription start site and not very much afterwards so if I was interested in these I could start pulling those out separately and looking at those so this sort of quantitation is a way that you can get a much more systematic view of your data uh, to see what's going on